Hello everyone, my name is Delta Jaretska and I work for the McGovern Institute for Brain Research at MIT. Today's lecture will be an introduction to the container technologies. I will present the motivation behind the container technologies, compare the software, give an example how to use Docker in Singularity, and at the end I will explain how to use NeuroDocker and NeuroDebian to create a customized image for Docker in Singularity. I will start from motivation. And I want to actually give like more general motivation and start from comparing scientific workflows in the past and now. So that may be like my, my very simplified model of scientific workflow in the past. So I can imagine that scientists were making experiments, even if the um, experimental setup was pretty complex, they were all of them uh, using much more, um, much simpler tools at that time. So we're using theory and equations to, uh, to apply in the, for the input data, and we're using scientific computation to get the results. And the results was shared with the community by publishing in the journal. What is important that already in the 17th century, scientists became aware of the importance of the reproducibility. So basically, they, they were claiming that if, if, one, if one scientist is not able to, to repeat the experiment, it, it ha doesn't have to accept the, the claims of other scientists. And it was also established later that single occurrence are no significance to science. And that is also something important that you, we have to keep in mind. So what, what is how the scientific workflows looks now? First of all, we changed the tools. We definitely changed the measurement tools. They became much more complex, even to build. More complex measurements and more complex questions require often more complex equation and algorithms. And in order to use these algorithms on the data that we have, we, use, we extensively, extensively use computers and we need bigger groups of scientists and software developers. Yet, for some reason, the way how we share the results is pretty much the same. And that basically led to the situ situation that the results are extremely hard, if not impossible, to reproduce based on, the, uh, based on the article. So this is how it looks like. We have large and heterogeneous data sets we have complex analysis and software, heterogeneous hardware, and results that are very hard to repeat. So I know you will be discussing more uh, the data issue and how to manage the data sets. During today's lectures, I will be discussing only the, the, uh, the issue with analysis and software. So what affect your analysis? So, first of all, obviously the version of your script you are using. Second, computational environment. We were talking last week that we have different operating systems, we have different compilers, and we have different version of programming languages that we are using. And at the end, it also you have to take into, into account hardware. So, the first part, I would say that can be relatively easy and controlled. And we were discussing last week, Git and version control systems. The hardware, I would claim that it's hardly ever you have control. And we often actually have to change the, the, the hardware during our research. And lastly, is the computational environment. We have limited control over local environment, but, full con but we can have, a, a, but we can have full control over virtual environment. And that will be the subject of our today lecture. So we can also like ask slightly different question, how to achieve reproducibility or at least re-execution of scientific pipelines. So the things that we were discussing last week, like straight account used in the analysis, track and share all the steps of the work. And we were like last week, we were discussing Git, but we were also dis discussing shell that can be a great help with this. 
And lastly, we should control and share the computational environment. And that we will discuss this week. Okay, so now we will be talking about containers. That is the main topic of today's lecture. So what are the containers? A container is a standardized, standardized unit of software that can run anywhere. But to have something more abstract, let us question what do they provide? First of all, they, they provide standard methods for creating and sharing computational environments. They allow for full isolation of computational environments. They provide easy in, interoperability and they can be run on Linux, Mac OS X, and Windows. They also provide immutability of environments because they cannot be easily changed permanently. So why do we need containers? So as we were discussing uh, before, obviously the long-term goal is science reproducibility. And as you know, each project in lab depends on complex software environments. It has different operating system, different dependencies. So basically having containers allow you to encapsulate the environment you are using so you and others can recreate the environment later in time and that allows you them to, to run your project. Second, but there are also like short-term perspective that might be important for you. So let's start from collaboration with your colleagues. As you might know that sharing your code is often not enough. Often still your uh, colleagues might have an issue with recreation your programs. So having containers, you can encapsulate and share your environment with others. And if your collaborator has the container software, the same environment can be created. The other issue you might have that the personal laptop might not be always enough. And some point you have to move to, uh, to other computers. And encapsulating environments will help you with this because you can easily create the environment on a different machine. And lastly, I think it's important freedom to experiment. I often had to install a complicated software and usually, you know, I tried everything what I could and it was usually a pretty stressful situation. But having containers, you can experiment in a container and keep your working environment pristine. And you can always remove experimental environment if you don't like it. And lastly, if you don't like installing things, because like installing all dependencies is not always easy, there are many ready to use existing environments. So you might end up installing Docker, downloading an image and just install it just used the container that someone else prepared for you. But now I will provide very short tool comparisons. So you might, heard, you might have heard about containers like Docker and Singularity, but also about virtual machines like VirtualBox. The main idea is the same, isolate the computing environments and allow, that allows for generating and sharing computing environments. But containers are very lightweight and much faster to start up. And that's why they became very popular. However, in some places you might have to still use virtual machines. And in the other places you might have to use containers. So what is the difference between Docker and Singularity? Let's start about Docker. Docker is a leading software container platform. It is open source project. It runs on GNU Linux, Mac OS, and Windows Pro without a need to install a virtual machine. However, the problem is that users have root privileges inside the containers that leads to serious security issue. And that is the main reason why in some places, admins will not allow you to install Docker. And that was an issue for scientists. So Singularity is basically a container solution created for scientific application. A user inside a Singularity container is the same user as outside the container. 
So you can be root inside only if you are outside, if, if you are root on the host system. Unfortunately, virtual machine is needed if you wanna use Singularity on Windows and OS X. What is nice that you can, uh, you can use Docker images to create Singularity images. And we'll talk about this later. So let's talk about using a container on your laptop. Let's imagine that you open a container on your local machine. In fact, you can actually open multiple containers at the same time. They obviously use the same hardware, but the user spaces and libraries are independent. And we concentrate on a specific container now. So having the container, you can access all the software that is, is installed inside. For example, you can, uh, you can add bet inside. But right now in the basic usage, there is no connection between these user spaces. If you simply run docker run command, you will open a container, but there will be no connections. So you can always create additional connection between your local machine and the container. One of the most useful one is like binding the local directories. You can use Docker run with dash v, uh, dash v option to provide connection for a specific, for a specific directory. In some cases, it might be useful to specify the, to create a binding that is, that is read only, especially if you, you create these bindings for, for input data that shouldn't be changed. You can also create multiple bindings. So you can uh, create a binding separately for input data and for output results. So let's open a terminal window and start using Docker. Okay, so we can start exploring Docker. I already have Docker installed on my laptop, so I can start using command line interface provided by Docker. So let's start from running help. If you have Docker installed, you should see the full help provided by Docker. And at the end, you will have a list of basic commands. Right now, we will be mostly using Docker run. And basically, that turns a command in a new container. And this is exactly what we want. If we want to have more examples and options for run command, you can also um, docker run dash dash help. And now we have take an example of using specifically docker run command. And you will see that you have like docker run options an image, you have to always provide an image and you can provide command and arguments. So one thing about the image. So image is a file that you have to have on your, on your local machine to be able to create container from the image. And we'll be discussing image later, but just so you know. And the image that I, I will be using, it's already on my laptop. So the several options that we'll be using, one of the useful options is RM. It will be automatically removed the container when it exists. And the other option will be use I for interactive usage. Okay, so, so let's get started. And we will start actually from exploring the, the container uh, from the in interactive usage. So we can type docker run dash dash rm and we actually type dash i in addition t and the name of the image that I will be using. And right now I'm in container. You can see that the prompt is different than I used to have. 
And by the way, I have like two terminal windows open. So on, on the right one, I will be using Docker. So sometimes I will be printing the content from the, from the containers. And here I will always keep it in my local machine. So we, you will be able to compare the content. So you can see that I'm in the conta container, for example, by using PWD or asking for, for a user. And you see that here the user is root, as we are saying that when you are on Docker, you are always root inside. On, on my local machine, if I'm asking the same question, it will tell me that I'm the root. Okay, but let's see if FSL is already indeed installed and I can run the bad command. Okay, so bad is indeed in, uh, installed and you have basic basic option how to use it. But, but you have to basically provide the input and output. The problem is that as we were saying during the lecture, if we don't provide any, any Findings. We don't have any connection to my local to my local machine. If I see the content, this is my content right now. We can I can also check the content in my home directory, and it has nothing, no data inside. So basically, I have to leave the leave the content uh, container, and in addition to run use docker run dash rm it. I have to create a binding. So in my local machine, I can check the content of the directory I'm in. I have data with one, with one file and I have output. And the output for now is it's an empty directory. So basically what I wanted to do is create a binding for data and for output. And in order to do it, we have to run dash b and provide path to, to data from, from my local machine perspective. So it will be data and the path inside the container. And it can be whatever you want. It, the, the, uh, the, direct, the name of the directory doesn't have to be the name of the existing directory. So it will create if it doesn't exist. So let's say it will be data. And in addition, and let's say we were saying that sometimes we wanna have we wanna protect our data and use read-only access. And now let's create an additional binding for our output. And let's say inside our container it will be called output from the root directory. Okay, so now if I go inside, we can see then the content, and we see that you have, in addition, you have data, and you have output. And you can check the content of data. And you will see that this is exactly the same as we're having here. So this is indeed the same, the same and the same directory. One difference is that if inside the container, I would try to create an empty file inside the directory. It would tell me that I have read only file system. So basically that is exactly what we get if we use are all option when we, we mount the file. And this is basically what we want. On the other hand, if you wanna create a file in the output directory, that should be fine. And you will see this, that we have another file in the output. And in our, our local system, in our local machine, we can, we can also see the, the, the file because this is the same directory. Okay, so now we have, uh, we check that everything is working. We have the data, we have the output directory with valid access. Now we can add 
set. So we can say um, and just just prefix to the output. One thing that I forgot is that you know I provide a, a prefix to the output without provide uh, without adding output. So right now it created in the main directory that is not mounted to my local directory. So I will not be able to see this. We can actually check just in case. You see, there is nothing in my on my local machine because this directory is not mounted. So what I actually wanted to do was run in the output directory that is mounted. Let's run again. This time you will be able to see in the container and I will be able to see on my local machine. Remember, the left terminal is always the local machine. So you see that this is exactly the same content. Okay, so we are embed and we can leave, leave the uh, exit uh, Docker container now. Just to double check, the content of output directory doesn't disappear. We did modify the output directory and, it will, and we will see it in the local machine. Let's clear the terminal. So we run this docker run command using dash rm to remove the container when exit. IT for interactive uh, interactive mode. We have two. Oh, I'm sorry. We have two mounting. Um, let's see. mounting points and we have the name of the of the image but we had to basically go inside go inside the docker container and run the back we don't have to do it like this we actually can remove it and provide the command after the name of the image you, maybe you remember that it, actually when you we run docker um, dash dash help That was the example of usage. Docker RAM, options, image, and optionally command with arguments. So our command will be bet, and the arguments will be input and output. And now that's a bit tricky, tricky part that you have to be careful because now you are providing the arguments for the command that will be run inside the container. So you have to provide the path that are seen from inside the container. So remember that was the mounting point here in within data within the container is just slash data. The name of the file will be, let's see. And we have to provide the output directory. Again, we have to provide the path that will be seen within the container. So output I just modified the, the name so we can see that it's created the same again. Okay, let's let's try to run this. Okay, it's finished. And now we can check the content of our app. Let's maybe clear this first. And we will check the, uh, check the content of our output directory on my local machine. And you see, so we have the previous results that we were running being inside the container by using IT option. And now we were basically, did, we did the same, but we didn't use the interactive mode, but we just um, doc docker run with, with bad command. 
And you can see that the, the file looks actually like the same. We can even try it if they are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And they are the same as it should be. Because in both cases, the bed was run within the container, which has, I like showed you like two different ways of doing this. There's actually one more way of running command within the container. So if we have like one command, it might be pretty easy to just to run, uh, just to write a command using the run command. But sometimes we might uh, we might have like more complicated pipeline, and we might actually want to run a script. And I will just show you a simple example. I will just move the script directory. Here. So now, when you check the combat of my local machine, you will see the scripts directory that has FSL bash. So let's see what is inside the FSL bash. So this is like, again, okay, that was Shabang that uh, we were talking about like last week. And this is a simple. A simple bit command that has takes first argument, second, and in, the, in addition is using dash m option to create a mask file. So let's try to let's run this example. So in this situation, we have to provide one more bindings. So we have data, we have output, and now we have to provide binding for the scripts. So again, dash V. The name of the uh, of the image, my FSL. And we run, we want to run the script. So we can have bash um, scripts my uh, FSL bash. And the first argument should be uh, the, the input data. So that will be data. And this is the name of the file. And output. And this time we will call output script. Okay, so let's see. There's no, okay, because I forgot to add this H extension. Okay, so let's check what is inside output file this time, output directory this time. So you will see that in addition to so this files that we had before, and now we have two new files, one, one additional with mask. So basically that we show you that we can also use scripts. Um, we can write simple like bash scripts or like Python scripts and also run within, within the container. One last thing during the same I wanted to show you that, you know, um, I told you that you should run with dash rm in order to remove the containers after you exit the container. But at the beginning, we, I am a couple of times without it, without this. And that's, we can see that if we, uh, if we write docker ps dash a, I have still like two containers that I exi exited, but were not removed. So there are two ways of removing this. Docker um, and the container ID. Now we have only one. Or we can also use container. 
I'm just asking the wrong show. And now if I check a list, I don't have any, any other left. And this might be pretty useful if you forget to, to use the R, dash dash RM block. Okay, so we were practicing running Docker inside on our uh, local machine. Uh, in your PDF version of the presentation, I will also include a link where you will have a similar demonstration for singularity. So remember that when I was running, uh, creating a new container, I was using an uh, image that I was called my FSR. So that was image that I already had on my lab. But now we'll be talking more about images and how to create or get one. So what is an image? Image is a mutable file that contains the source code, libraries, all dependencies, files, etc. It can be treated as a snapshot that represents environment and other software at a specific point in time. In, in case of Docker, images contain multiple layers that can be reused by, by many different images. It is not the case for singularity. And in order to run a container, you need to have an image. But from the same image, several containers can be run. So let's imagine this is our image. And from the image, we can create containers. And every single time we are creating a container, it should be exactly the same environment. It doesn't mean that we cannot change this. We can install later software and get new containers. But if we start again from the image, we should exactly have the same container that we had at the very beginning. And this is the cru crucial feature why we are using uh, containers because it will allow you to, um, to get the same exact environment in the future. So how do I get an image I need? One way is to find existing image. It can be shared, for example, on Docker Hub. Uh, you can find also on other websites and often the software that you are using can have the pointers to the images that they are creating and, and showing. You can receive from collaborators or you can build your own from something what is called Dockerfy. So what is Dockerfy? It's a script, it's a text file that contains instructions that define how to build a specific Docker image. And unfortunately, you have to write your own. So if you need something easy, the Docker file will be easy. So basically here, we always start from some base image. In this case, I'm starting from Ubuntu, the latest. And I only wanna update apt-get, the package manager, and install git emacs. So basically, this is pretty, pretty simple Docker image, Docker file that, and then I can create the image with Git and Emacs. However, of course, in many applications, the Docker files are much more complicated. You, many software, in, when you are selling other software, sometimes AppGet might not be enough. You have to set some environmental variables, you have to uh, provide some entry point, etc. And that can lead to uh, rather long Docker files. But this is the place where newer Docker can help. So what is newer Docker? It basically is a software that simplifies writing Docker files and singularity files. It incorporates the best practice for installing software that you might not be even aware of. And it supports popular and newer emerging software like Epni and FreeServer, et cetera. It also supports some general purpose a language uh, software like Python. It uses RepoZip for minifying existing Docker images. It is kind of important because uh, using Docker images, you, you will soon uh, recognize that the Docker images might be, might be pretty big. So this is something that you, you should be aware and you should try to uh, minimize the images whenever you can. And this is an example of, uh, of, an, uh, of a Docker file. This is basically the same, uh, the same uh, example as I showed you before. So before there was a rather long Docker file, 
And now you have a Docker, new, a new Docker uh, command that recreates the same file. And you can see that that command is much shorter and much easier to understand. And you can go to uh, your Docker website and you will find much more examples. So if you are interested in installing Afni, you can go and see another example how to install Afni and some popular, uh, popular uh, keywords. The entire list of, of supported software you can find on the main page of the Docker Hub repository. And it's here. Okay, so coming back to the to the presentation, and now we will uh, see how it works using new uh, new Docker, and we come back to the terminal window and try to run new Docker. So, one thing about new Docker is that it is a package written in Python, and you can install. Um, uh, using just pip install, but you can also, instead of installing, you can also use a Docker image that contains a new Docker inside. So basically the main, the main command is, sorry. So the command is generate docker dash dash base and etc. But entire you need to run a, a Docker in order to execute the command. Okay, so let's try to. Let's try to copy the command to our terminal. So at the very beginning, okay. So let's run the command with our Docker file. So, so, so once again, so basically this part is the part that we were actually already practicing. We are running a container. The container is from Reponym New Docker, the version 0 0.7.0. And within the, the container, there is a new Docker installed. And you, we can run the new Docker command that is generate Docker. And here you specify which base image you want to use. In this situation, we're using new Debian, which package manager it's apt, and what do you want to install. In this case, we're installing FSL in version 5.0. And this is the And this is what your Docker produces. So this is the, the specification that is needed for Docker to create an image. And right now we can we can run this in the Docker file. Okay, so we have a Docker file. So as we are saying, the reason why we create Dockerify because we want to create an image at the end. So now we can create an image. It's often the, uh, a good idea to actually create a Docker image from empty directory. So we create an empty directory. It might be just faster. And we remove the Docker folder. So now we will be using docker command and we can use docker help again to get some help. So again, we have a list of commands. Remember we're using docker run, but this time we'll be using docker build. So we are running docker build and you can check docker build help, but just to be uh, faster, I uh, will just tell you right now that we need dash t to specify the name of the uh, of the um, of the image. For example, new FSL and dot at the end. So right now you see that the that the Docker image has nine layers. 
And that were the layers that I was like discussing before. The reason why it's so fast is because I have like very similar image. So basically was able to reuse every single, every single layer. Remember I was telling you that the, the, the layers can be used by other, uh, other images. And you see every single layer that was, was needed could find on my laptop. That's why it was so fast. Of course, if you are building from scratch, it, ha it will have to take time to download and install FSL and such. So right now we can check if we have the, uh, if we have the new image by running Docker images. So I have different, different version of images, but you can see that here is the new FSL. One important thing to mention is that you have the repository, you have the names, but you have also tags. So you can see that the default, like doing our build, I was not providing anyone anything. So that's why it was it it, it used the, the default name, the latest. It's often good idea to actually use the tag. So later when you are building a new image, you can use the same name such as add a new tag. Okay, so let's come back to our presentation. So we showed you how to create a Docker file from uh, using a, a new Docker. We showed you how to build an image having Docker file and how to run the container having an image. But there is one more thing that, so, so as we were saying Docker and Singularity files are just text files and you basically um, include the what should be installed. But the issue is that if you are using the same, the, the recipe, the Docker or Singularity file in 2020, and in 2021, you can have different images. If your recipe basically includes install Python, it will be installed the default Python and it can be different Python in 2020 and it can be different Python in 2021. So if we don't think about this, if we do not specify the things, we have different images and we have different containers. So remember, once you have an image, you will always have the same container, but having just like Dockerify without like a more careful specification will not lead to the same image, not necessarily. So this is the reason why NeoDocker allows you to use NeoDebian option for freeze. Basically this option allows you to use the same, it allows you to create a Dockerify that will, uh, will give you exactly the same image in 2020 and in 2021. It basically calls apt, uh, apt uh, package manager to point to the same snap, snapshot of packages. But you have to think about this when you are building Docker file. If you are not thinking about this, you can, you can get two different images in two different points of time. And of course, if the images are the same, you will have the same containers. Okay, thank you so much. That was it for today. And uh, you will get the PDF of this, of this presentation. And the PDF of the, uh, the presentation will contain more links to further readings. Thank you.